Welcome to a new episode of These Go to 11. Let's turn it up. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to These Go to 11, an unchurchy conversation about everyday faith. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and review on your favorite podcast platform. This not only helps us to get our content out there, but also helps us to find out what you, our faithful listeners, think. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to These Go to 11. Once again, I'm Nathan Bell. Joining me as always, Greg Dutcher. Greg, what's going on, man? Dude, I want to thank Joy for releasing you on the 4th. (laughs) <laughs> unless we might be recording a little early but i think so considering joy leaves for uh ghana on y- the fifth yes i think her and i are spending some time together i think that's probably a wise decision <laughs> my friend. That's, so now we know your fourth of july plan that's right right spend the day with joy that's right Dude, and remind me, she she shared that in church recently. Yes. Going to Ghana, remind me of the length of the trip. Yes, so 10 days. 10 so days. So she'll, yeah. uh, she'll be gone the 5th. Uh, she officially leaves on the 5th. Um, I love the fact that she is serving in this way. I hate the fact I have to take her down to Washington, D.C. to get out of here. Uh, and d- she dude, re- is it Dulles? It is. Oh. And she comes back on the 15th. And again, I love the fact that I'll be seeing her. I'm bemoaning the fact that I will have to go down there and pick her up. Dude, here's what I would test this on, Joy. Tell me if this works. Yeah. I'll keep my couch open for you. Because um, <laughs> I, I have an idea. I was going to say, Joy, I just think. Dude, uh, no offense to your couch, but I've got a basement yeah. with a projection screen TV. <laughs> yeah. I'll just sleep down there. You mean you don't want to come up with the, the Dutchers with six of us there, cram in our basement right outside of Ben's bedroom? You'd rather be in your own palatial uh, establishment? Yeah, I, I think that's good. Um, I would say if you told Joy, Joy, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. So I just feel we'd be cheating ourselves <laughs> if you didn't take an Uber from her house down to Actually, to I kid you not, I yeah. looked up the cost. Did you? <laughs> to go down and back with an Uber. Oh, it's and, probably a fortune. Oh, isn't yeah, it, dude? It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, Something it's like, a fortune. yeah, it's it's over $100. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're like, I think oh. it was close to two. <laughs> Just know my heart will be feeling your pain. I will yeah. think of you uh, uh, on the 5th because uh, that's tough. But it's a great trip. Yes, for great Joy opportunity uh, for her to to serve in that capacity and all the work that they're going to uh, be doing. Um, I am going to try to convince her when she gets back to get on the podcast and talk to us about it. So. Oh, dude, that would be a um, first. Yeah. We have not, dude. If we can get my rather reserved wife, yeah, who's been on a couple of times, I know we can get Joy. Yeah, I mean, dude, she's a teacher. No, she's been on twice. Oh, you're right. She was on with Elise Fitzpatrick once, and then she was on with Lisa once. I think, dude, I compl- That was I totally that was forgot ages about ago. That. Yeah, we did get her on. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's a piece of cake. Yeah, dude, we'll guilt her for all our talk about that's grace. Right. We'll just guilt that's her because right. I always say. Guilt produces short-term results. That's right. I do. We can get her on a 45-minute podcast. That's why, that's why I killed my guilt gene a long time ago. The, yes. It, it's ridiculous because, uh, well, no, I don't think it's ridiculous. Joy does because she's like, yeah, Nathan feels no guilt, and I got his. <laughs> Somebody had to pick up your guilt yeah. deficit, right, dude? Um, no, that's awesome, man. So the, you guys are just going to spend the day together. I'm sure there's a lot of... Last minute errand stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Just yeah, always just, you know, do you have X, Y, Z? Oh, yeah, but uh, I should probably get this. And, oh, shoot, you know, I, I forgot the adapter or I can't find the yeah, adapter. All right, right, let's just go out and get another one. It's, yep. You know, so, yeah, there, there'll be there'll be a lot of that going on. And, I mean, the good news is being the fourth, it'll be a little busier. Yeah. Um, in the morning before noon. Sure. Most stores will be open till, you know, around three. So, yeah. you know, between noon and three, go out and pick up whatever we need to last minute. So yeah. it, it'll be good. Good. Good, dude. I I don't know what it is. The fourth, certain holidays just always feels, doesn't matter if it's a weekday, weekend, just feels like the same yes. day every yes. year. It, it's it's like Christmas Day. Yeah. Whatever it is, falls on a Sunday or a Thursday. It's just 
The fourth has a very definitive feel there, to me. There are very specific routines with yes. days like that. It doesn't again, like you said, it doesn't matter whether it's Christmas, New Year's, yep. Thanksgiving, yep. right? I mean, well, Thanksgiving does fall on the same day every well, year. Well, yeah, but not but the same date. That's true. Right. Uh but yeah, I just just the the expectations and the routines. Yep. There are things that you just look at and you say, We are not changing or deviating from this pattern. Yep. Absolutely, and, it was comfort. And the fourth, yeah, the fourth is one of those. Yeah, yeah. I uh, well, dude, I I love that. I we are going uh, up to Pennsylvania to Shrewsbury, where at least his cousin and her family is. She kindly invited us. Or it's good uh, having just gotten back um, from vacation. It was a little much for us to host. Sure, because uh, <laughs> you know you're just tired and, and yeah. everything, and you're you're still kind of unpacking. So. Uh, Lisa's cousin Kara, who who goes here, she's like a sister to, to us. She's a she's a sweetheart. She's hosting uh, our whole crew. Lisa's mother, um, Lisa's brother David, and his family is all up. Oh, from nice! Houston. That's great. And so the other brothers, big group of us going up there. Yeah. And it's a big cookout. And dude, I love it. We're probably bringing I don't know we meaning whatever Lisa's made or right, is bringing, right. we're bringing that. I was going to say, you're not just going to Wegmans and buying the white cake? <laughs> no. Oh, my goodness, dude. The ultimate white cake. You can get the full one, Nathan, for a low, low $25, and it's worth every succulent <laughs> artery-clogging bite. <sighs> that thing is fantastic. Uh, no, I would not buy the white cake, because that means I'd have to share it with people. <laughs> when we buy the white cake, it's for us. Nice. Uh, nice. So we'll get some cheap no crap. I'm I'm not sure we. Uh, the kids love the cake that. Um, I'm, I, it's not unique to us. I'm sure millions of people, literally in the country, make it. But um, it's. I think of it as just kind of a just a basic like vanilla cake, but she soaks it with um, where there's red, white, blue. You know oh what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? yeah, yeah. Frost it yep. uh, with whipped cream. Yep. And you put the, the strawberries the, and blueberries. Yeah, the fruit. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Man. Yeah, I thought you were going to say soaks it in rum. I was going. I'm all over that. Oh yeah, yeah. We've done that too, dude. We've done that. Ooh, a rum cake. Mm-hmm. That sounds good, dude. Here, let me text Lisa <laughs> to uh, whatever she's making for dessert. Scratch it. That's right. It. Well, while you do that, um, let our listeners know. Uh, so it is Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July to everyone out there. Whether you are hanging out at home barbecuing, maybe you're traveling somewhere, yeah. maybe you're in the midst of. Nice beach vacation, whatever's going on. Happy 4th of July. I just want to let our listeners know our format's going to be a little different today. Uh, Greg, you and I got into a nostalgia mood right before we started recording, and we were like, you know what? We're going to do half this podcast nostalging up summer and the 4th and all the good things about that. And then um, about our second half, so once we get into the second half of the podcast... So if you're looking at this, you can kind of skip ahead if you're not interested in that. Uh, we're we're going to talk uh, more more serious, some some patriotism thoughts on foundings of the country and and how that ties into biblical um, responsibilities and uh, what do we do as believers mm-hmm. uh, on on all levels of things. You know, what do you do if you're a believer and you uh, serve? You know, you're whether you're yep. a politician, whether you're a soldier. Whether you're uh, a layperson in the mm-hmm. church, uh, whether you're a teacher, you know, what what are your specific biblical mandated responsibilities, or what are your freedoms and convictions? Yeah, good. Uh, so we'll get into that in the second half. But, uh, dude, can I just say um, we we talked about this a few weeks ago. Uh, you made a comment about uh, Matt when he was younger. Having oh, a yeah. conversation with a uh, piano teacher. This piano his. teacher, I can't, I, he's mentioned her name, I forget. I, she's probably, I'm sure, long yeah. gone, dude, because we were teenagers. Right. And she was a retired, I remember she's a sweet little older lady yep. that would come over. And uh, I, if I was hanging with Matt, I'd end up somewhere for a half hour yeah, yeah. I don't know, playing Atari in his basement or something because he had to get this piano lesson in. You were so glad you were you at that time, weren't you? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) I'm going to not be here. (laughs) Yeah, I won't be here for that. I'll be playing some Space Invaders in the basement. Um, But she, you know, would make a comment that, you know, you know, Fourth of July. Oh, yeah. Summer's almost over now. (laughs) 
And, you know, as a kid, it's like, what? What are you talking <laughs> like, about? Are There's you still kidding like me? Two months left. We're just revving up, baby. I have found, though, as I've gotten older, yeah. that 4th of July hits and it's like, shoot, the summer is like almost done. <laughs> no, uh, dude, that's the appropriate balance. Don't you think part of it, dude, is as we get older, there is an increasing recognition of the swiftness of time yes and how getting from yeah. july to september is not the gigantic leap yeah. that maybe it seems like when we're kids like oh that's gonna be because what happens for me is i think of key events mm -hmm. like we have some weddings this summer oh gosh we're gonna have that wedding and then we're taking our trip and then yeah. when that's done we're practically there right i think when you're a kid it's a little different yeah because i think you can really appreciate the day yeah and I don't know about you, dude. For me, summer always felt like this just almost never-ending oh, unfolding of possibility, of, yeah, right? Adventure and yes. what's coming next. Well, I mean, part of that, too, I think I think you're right. I think age, in a very practical way, has a lot to deal with it, right? I mean, yeah. you know, think about when you're 10 and and the... the you're you're ten years old, and in the perspective of a ten year old, yeah. and three months in that time frame, yep, that that's a significant amount of time. Oh, that, yeah. you know, really has yet to pass. Yeah, where you know, as you're getting older, you know, Greg, fifty two, I'm forty one. Three months isn't actually as long as it seems no. in the perspective of age like that. It's you a know? cup of coffee, dude. I mean, I mean, it's 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 like your height in some instances, yeah. right? I mean, if you're if you're three feet tall, then a three foot tall wall yeah. seems huge, right? You know, but if you're you know five ten or six four like you are, three foot wall, I'll just step up on that thing, you know. Yes. And so everything just has a perspective. And as you get older, time and age also has, I think, that same perspective and moves and flows. Dude, it's a very – people have observed this, what you just said, snowstorms. Yeah. When you're a little kid, you're a lot closer yeah. to the snow. I yeah. mean, literally, physically, yeah. right? So, uh, you know, it takes a lot to, as you get older and bigger, to be impressed with a real uh, town-stopping snowstorm. Yes, uh uh, but I do miss it, Nathan. The closest I get to it, and it's harder, it's it's a fleeting uh, experience. Because Lisa and I talk all the time. I'm sure you and Joy feel the same way. Now when you get to a vacation, I don't know. For me, it takes a day or two to really settle in. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, this is the rhythm. You know, yeah. there, There's just a lot of errands when you first get in, you know, in terms yep. of even practical things, getting the place properly climate controlled and and uh, you go into the store and stocking up and just yeah. getting your whole system down and then exploring the new territory. When you can get into that zone, yes, that's when I go back to childhood, where it's like sometimes day two, day yeah. three, I'm like, man, this is nice. These next few days, there's really nothing to do other than what we want to do. Yeah. Um, and I think a kid in the summer, yeah, that was, I think you and I have talked to you. That's, woo! Yeah, that's sweet spot it, right it, there. It is sweet. Uh of course, there's some things that have changed. Like um, I was talking about this with, with guys recently here at church, um, dude. And you know, we're, we're close enough in age that it mm -hmm. was probably similar, dude. In the '70s, '80s, when I was a kid, mm -hmm. so many of my summer days were me, my brother, and our friends Rob and Craig, two twins that lived down the street. Yep. And it was perfect because they were right in between us. Andy and I were about four years apart. Yep. These kids were right at the halfway point. Yep. So it was two sets of brothers. And, I mean, it was just endless connection that we had. Yeah. And, dude, we would ride our bikes. Yeah. All day. All day long. Yeah. And I it, that doesn't happen as much anymore. A lot of it is, I mean, I, I get nervous when my kids are a little, uh, I don't want them out right. in the world. Right. Dangerous place that long. But, honestly, dude, the only thing I remember my mother really stressing Sometimes we'd come back for lunch. Sometimes I could say we'd we'd play Atari again. Yeah. There's an Atari reference. Yeah. And, you know, my mom would make us lunch, or we'd go to Robin Craig's house, and her mom would would make us lunch. And, yep. and then we'd we'd take bike adventures to the Seven Eleven. Yeah. Get Slurpees and some, and then we'd go down to Double Rock Park and and uh, just and all my mother really asked is sometimes we had to be home before it got dark. Yep. 
I'm yeah. like, what? We did that? Yeah. We were just out like kids owning all of creation. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Um, no, I'm sure I'm sure you and I did have a very similar experience. Um, you know, you, you grew up in the Parkville area. Yeah. Um, where I grew up, I grew up uh, mostly in the Manchester area in yeah. New Hampshire. And um, the areas that I grew up in, uh, particularly my dad went back to college when I was very young. Um, th- so the areas that I grew up in weren't great. Yeah. I mean, my my brother uh, was shot with a pellet gun oh. um, in the area I was in. A kid was playing with uh, gasoline and, and burned himself. Like, mm. these, are the, these are the areas, like, when you think of, like, I mean, if you were going to extrapolate like the the crime and danger of what Baltimore, you know, probably was yeah. at that time. I mean, this is probably. I mean, again, it's it's New England, New Hampshire, so it hasn't quite yeah. aged as much. But like, these are real things that are going on, yeah. and you know, issues and you know things like that. But it was the same thing. Like there was really never a worry or you know this is going to happen it's yeah. just you know hey make sure that you yeah again you know, make sure you check in again at lunch you know make sure you're back here for lunch and then yeah. make sure you're back here before for dinner and then you know you've got a few hours to play before it gets dark make sure you're back before it's dark right but but i mean for the hours in between those things yeah. there was no question of what we were doing or no. where we were going it was just you know, don't bother me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so true, dude. I know we, um, I think we, we would say all the same things and it was, um, uh, it was just, did you, oh, it was just, just great. Dude. Yeah. I think when I, you know, one of my favorite scenes in Shawshank, yep. you know, because you've got, uh, all the guys, uh, you know, Tim Robbins, uh, Andy Dufresne and the fellow inmates, he scored the roof job and yes. the beer yes. for them. Remember, he goes to the the mean guard and yep. and does this whole thing. But that narration where Morgan Freeman does yes. it is summer like to me. He says, "There we were." Now I think it was fall in the movie. Yep. But I can't remember his beautiful narrative form. Yeah. He says, "We were the lords of all creation." Yep. Um, and you know, small L, yeah. I would say. Yeah. But you are. You're just the the world is there for to be enjoyed, to be explored. Yep. Uh, and summer to me captures that. And I wonder sometimes, I can't get inside my kids' heads. They like summer. Yeah. I tell myself their summers are a little different yeah. because of some of these things we're talking about than mine were. Yeah. But, you know, obviously being out of school is always a plus. Right. And because they don't know the difference, it breaks my heart for them, dude. I'm sorry. Quick rant. Yeah. For the hundredth time. School should be ending. On Memorial Day weekend <laughs> and starting on Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Why does anybody need to set foot in school in June? Come on. Yeah. <clears throat> now, you're in private school. You do it a, a little shorter. A little bit, yeah. So mostly the reason why we go a little later is the finishing up of exams. Right. So uh, that that's mostly why we are extending our time into that June 9th, 8th, 7th, you know, depending on yep. where it falls, uh, that that. Usually it's the first or second Friday in June that we're yeah. ending. Oh, well, dude, I mean, I, uh, public school growing up, I always had, um, it was basically three months because mm-hmm. you were out in early June and you went back after Labor Day. Yep. And if you were lucky, you'd get like the Labor Day as the seventh. Yes. You go so you eighth. go as full as you can into. Uh, uh, yep. As long as sometimes you had to go on the second and that yep. sucked. It was a little shorter. But my kids this year, you know, they, uh, Harford County Schools are going back. I don't know. It's ridiculous. It might be August 28th. Yeah. Um, that's just the nature. You know, world has changed. They've got reasons. There's standardized testing and all that. Yeah, the reasons so, are because people who are making these decisions aren't educators. Sorry. Yes. I just, uh, had to say that. No, that's that's true. And I always think, have you have you talked to a kid or a teacher? Neither right. of them wants to be there in August. Trust right. me. I've talked to many. Um but you know, their so their summers are a little shorter. Yes. So I think um, you know they got out this year, June fifteenth. Yep. And they go back. I don't know, August twenty seventh or something. So in some ways, it's like, ooh, you're getting close to losing almost a month of what yeah. I had. Yeah. So that, that Greg, kind of I got an idea of how we can take that back. Yes. Forget all of the holidays. Yes. Right. So so as a Christian, I'm going to say, okay, forget Christmas holiday, forget Easter holiday. Yep. Just have individual families decide which holidays are important to them. Yep. 
and you guys stay home. Yep. And you celebrate your holiday, and everybody else just goes to school, and right. the school runs. And if you have a day off, you have a day off. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, dude, that would be commonsensical. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> so it probably won't get done. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not even a little bit. Yes. Yes. But I, I do, dude. I feel for my kids because I, I, I want them to have that experience. I think a lot of shaping comes in the summer. And, dude, for us, vacation yeah was just a really sweet memory um ours were pretty typical we went to sunset beach right outside of myrtle beach in yep. north carolina and uh, other times uh, my parents lived in winter haven florida just outside of orlando okay so i had a pretty good uh we were running the table there for a while because you, you'd hit orlando disney world sea world yeah now in back York- when you could afford it yes yes or my parents could right uh back then i'm sure in the early 80s you know i remember i think we were there at epcot its first year which i want to say for some reason it feels like it was 82 is it is it that old i thought I it's could, that old okay you but, could be right. I, I was thinking like 89 or something like that, but you could be right. I thought it was, yeah, because I know uh, I would have been 19 in 89, and I okay. feel like it had been around, around for, some for time. a bit. But, dude, that feeling was always just great. Yeah. You know, to get to a place, and it's summer, there's no school, there's 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 a kind of uh, adventurous thing. But yeah. that's me. Dude, what stuff did you love about summer? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, it was it was a lot of the same things. You know, like I said, I was, I lived in the city area until I was um, uh, eight. I was turning nine that year. And um, it was, I mean, it was... It was great. I mean, and then once we moved to the country, uh, everything was just an exploration. I mean, we we lived on five acres, wow. so going out, you know, all over the place. We had two. We had one pond, and then we had another pond dug shortly after we moved there. So we had two ponds on the property. Nice. Um, and then just all up and down the road, I can still remember. I mean, th- this was a place that I would go to uh, even uh, into my 20s um, down the road about a mile or so down the road from us um you could cut off on the road it was a little waterway but it had cut through this granite area yeah and so i would get friends together and we would go down there and go uh bouldering which for those of you who don't know what that is it's it's basically mini rock climbing oh wow um, I'm, it's bouldering yeah so instead Never of like that, you know dude. full out cliff scaling um you know the highest these things are, are maybe 20 feet wow and you get some mats out and you just, you know, you'd practice like lower, more intense climbing yeah. in these areas. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we would we would do that for hours on end. And, yeah. Um, again, just great time riding our bikes all over the place. Yeah. You know, once once I became a teenager, you know, 15, 16, um, you know, we'd ride our bikes down to the, it was called Clough Pond, but it was, you know, bigger lake type area. Yeah. Um, and so we'd go down there and go swimming. Mm. I mean, great thing about New Hampshire, New England areas, tons of these lakes and pond areas That's that nice you can too. go swimming in. Yeah. Um, not a fan of ocean swimming, but I yeah. do love lake swimming. Le- oh, dude, I know. I'm with you on that. I, I like the ocean for what it what it is mm-hmm. i love the salt air i love just sort of the uh, the vibe you get there and you know just the carefree nature of it and i can do some boogie boarding sure uh my knees and back do not cooperate like they used to <laughs> uh but my mind feels the same yeah so i got i mean dude when the kids were small i'd be out there with those boys for hours and the girls too they yeah well Ella, my youngest, didn't like it quite as much. She's more of a chill by the ocean. They would go in a little bit. Um, and um, actually, as she got older, she got into it. I think that's when I started realizing, shoot, oh, I want right. my body to hold up. <laughs> uh, but I'd be out there for hours with the kids. And when I was a kid, dude, oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. It was just. And I remember taking, did you ever take the tumble where you're eating a mouthful of sand? Yes, yeah. Coming out yep. crying. I'm never getting back in there again until an hour later, yeah. and I worked up the nerve. Um, <laughs> got stung by a jellyfish. Yep. Uh, actually, I've been stung by a jellyfish three or four times. The worst one I ever had, dude, is when I was um, in my 20s, and I remember it was scary. I thought I was having a heart attack. I didn't even know. Oh, wow. Um, and then another swimmer out there said, oh, I think you had a jellyfish on you. Yeah. It must have been pretty big because he saw it when I got up right around my chest. Yeah. And, dude, the pain... 
and the welts. Yeah. Woo. I never had uh, any on my chest. I, I would typically wear a uh, half wetsuit. Yeah. So I never had any on my chest, but my legs, oh my goodness. Yeah. I get stung on my legs like crazy, and that was oh, yeah. Yeah, no those, fun. Man, those things hurt. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes I'm mindful of that. Like they'll, they'll, you can look up jellyfish reports. And yeah, I don't. I I, I don't want to get in the water when there's jellyfish. That's, right. That's you know if, if there's a concentration of them. Um, but do, and what about your fourths? What did you do on on most of your fourths? Yeah, you the, I mean those again. Those were fairly standard, right? I mean you just kind of wake up, have you know, mom went out and got uh, some pastries or uh-huh. something, you know. So it was a pretty something. Chill breakfast. Yeah, but you something know. a little different, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we and do then, that too. Um, you know, always some kind of barbecue cookout, you know, hamburgers, yeah. hot dogs, potato salad, coleslaw, you know, just that was pretty standard. And then fireworks in the evening. Fireworks, yep. Um, most of the time it was just kind of chill around the house. Yeah. You know, uh, occasionally we'd invite some people over, we'd go over to a friend's house, but it would kind of be within the neighborhood. Yes. Um, we would never really go anywhere for it. Yep. And then, like I said, in the evening it was, Hey, we're going to, we're going to find a place to, to go do fireworks. And, yeah. and that was, that was the day, but like just everything again, it was just, it was routine. You know, you were expecting yes. that these things were going to happen. You know, there were going to be some kind of pastry or Danish that you were going to wake up to in the morning. And then, yep. At some point, you know, whether it was a uh, a lunch or, uh, you know, lunch slash dinner yep. or a dinner, there was going to be some kind of cookout thing going on. Yep. and uh, That's and, what we did, dude. I feel like it was always around mid-afternoon, so it kind of yeah. covered both. Same thing. You'd have something in the morning like that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it just, it just had a feel. And I remember as a kid even looking forward to fireworks. Yeah. We did them most years. I feel there were a few years we maybe had something else and I was disappointed. Yep. In my teenage years, you're always kind of hopping with whatever group of friends. Exactly, is gonna go yeah. to such and such a place. Yep. Um, we really do enjoy fireworks. Now, when, you're li- when the kids are little, it's really tough because it's about getting there on the right time, hoping they're not cranky, yeah. having the accoutrement right. to make sure they're comfortable so you can get through the enjoyment. Sometimes you got kids that are scared of the fireworks. Right. You're like, we did all this for them to be crying right. and overwhelmed, and Lisa's trying to soothe a, a kid and all that. Well, and you probably, when when your kids were around, uh, this was probably just before people started having the bright idea of getting the earphones yes. for the kids for those louder events right it's true um did you notice dude a few weeks ago back at um when we did our our uh, volunteer appreciation mm-hmm. night uh, at the restaurant uh it was uh matt's brother jeff and his wife beth have uh, a little grandbaby was cute they had those yes. over the ear headphones on her because it was loud yeah yeah you know, we had music yep. going we had a ton of people in that restaurant and uh it's brilliant yeah you know because they they're just Bobble yeah, heading all around. Do that, yeah, <clears throat> that actually, yeah, it is true. I don't remember anybody doing that, but now when we go out with them, I love it, dude. And yeah. we might not get all of them. It's hard to get all six of us, you know. With sure, everybody's got their friend groups and stuff. But if we get a a portion of them, it's just so much more relaxing. Like we say, hey, each of you take your own lawn chair. Yep, and we've kind of got a spot around here that we know. Yep. Uh, just off the beaten path, yeah. I, I've kind of learned where to park so yep. we don't get stuck in a in a perpetual traffic jam. Yep. Um, and to me, dude, fireworks are, are pure nostalgia. Why? Uh, do you see anything at a fireworks show that you've not seen a right. hundred times? <laughs> oh, you mean it's going to end with a big finale and right. everybody's going to go, ooh, <laughs> ah. So why do we do it? I do it every year. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just because... It, it's, There's something about the experience. It is so fully sensory, right? It is. I mean, it is sight, it's sound, it's even smell, like smelling smell. the gunpowder. Yeah, dude, you're I right. I mean, it's yeah. just it is the full experience. People that are there, everybody together. Ooh, yep. ah, yep. you know, I mean, it, it, there, there's just something again that that pulls you back to those different points in time. Yes. Right. And it gets you thinking about this 4th of July that we had and that 4th of July that we had. Yeah. And it, 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 it's just, it's, it, it bridges the, the gaps in your mind, it does. you know, in such a way that really, again, it's kind of like Christmases, right? Yep. Like they just, 
certain things just bridge those gaps yeah. that are like, oh yeah, I, I hadn't thought about that for years. And then right. it's just, it's triggered because of all the senses yes, and everything that's going on. Yeah. I, I agree, dude. And it, it does. I just feel, I don't know what, something soothing about it. Yeah. You know, and let's be honest, we're, I mean, there's a reason, dude, I have favorite movies and I, if they come on, like dude, Jaws was on recently. Yep. I ha- I don't think Jaws has ever come on. TV and I'm flipping around and I see it where I haven't finished it. Yeah. Um, Doesn't matter where it is. Yeah, I know yeah. every scene, every line. Yeah. I know exactly what's going to happen. Um, but it, there's just, I want to see it. Yeah. You know, it, it, there, there's something that happens. And I think that's a, yeah, the, the good 4th of July, dude, ending with fireworks is good. Before we move on to serious stuff, dude, yeah. we will. Yeah. You have to choose. Okay. You only get one. All right. Hamburger or hot dog? Ah, uh, ooh. I'm going to say hamburger, uh-huh. and the reason is because um, I can eat hamburgers uh, almost any time. Yep. I enjoy hot dogs, but it's very specific and situational. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go with hamburgers. What about you? Uh, you gave the wrong answer. The right answer is bratwurst. Um, <laughs> wait, I didn't offer that. Um, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I like Hot dogs, to me, remind me of a comedian I heard years ago who said, you know, most of the year I'm fine. Uh, my life is pretty fine without fudge. Uh, so why is it when I go on vacation, it's a, I have to have fudge? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's certain things you do because they're associated with other things. Yes. You know, how often are people eating pumpkin pie in May? Yeah. I like some pumpkin pie with whipped cream. I'm usually only eating it. Right. Uh, kind of maybe Christmas, that short yeah, little window. Yeah, you know, yeah. The end of the year. November, December-ish. That's the yeah. time. You yeah. could eat it. They sell it. You could yep. make it. Lisa makes a great pumpkin pie. Um, but I only eat it then. Hot dogs to me are kind of in that category. Yeah. I often get them at an Orioles game. Yep. I got to get a hot dog. Yep. You know, I got to get beer and a hot dog. One of dog. those foot long. Yeah. 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 It just uh, feels, feels uh, right. But yeah, hamburger, I like Lisa just knows now. There was, she's looking, we're looking at the grill that's okay. Give those two hamburgers for dad. Yeah. He'll be fine without the hot dogs. Um, but uh, the other thing too is. Uh, I guess you could say the same about hamburgers, but when you when you know how hot dogs are made, uh, of course, it's something I never think about when I'm eating it. Right. And if I do, I'll just put it out of my that's head. That's right. That's uh, right. But that's, uh, yeah, that's that's good. And occasionally, dude, we'll do some other things. I also like... like Sweet Italian sausage, baby. Oh, dude. Peppers and onions. Peppers and onions on there. You get the boy. That is good. Now, do you like brats? I do, yeah. yeah. Actually, um, Aldi, if uh, do you guys shop at Aldi yeah, at all? Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, they've got really good beer brats. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They, Love those. I, I've actually, it's, sweet Italian sausage used to be my favorite. Yeah. And then I discovered these beer brats at yeah. Aldi because I do. I prefer the Italian sausage over the brats. Yeah. But these beer brats. Oh. Yeah, they're. I know what you mean. I've had. I actually had one uh, at the Orioles game. Uh, they had a, a brat stand, and it was. Oh, it was. Nice. It, it was good. It yep. just they were made well, and uh, sometimes yeah. you get the cheddar infused ones. Yeah, oh. dude, let's just end this podcast. Go I know. Right <laughs> hey, we did it before, yeah. right? <laughs> no, we did we're we're going to go grab food. our food and then we'll come back. And <laughs> yes, dude, fun. Yeah, I like going down memory lane. It is. It. It's it's great, and again, it just it brings up such good memories. You know, I I talked. Um, uh, this was this was several months ago now. I talked about the importance of of memories. Yeah, and um, one of the things that I that really hit home for me and sunk in about the importance of memories. Right, we were, we were connecting it to the Lord's Supper. Why yeah. did Christ give us things to remember Him by? Yes, um, and I can remember in the last few weeks that um, uh, Joy's grandfather was uh, in decline. Yeah, uh, we knew the end was coming. Um, he just, he looked at me and I had been, I, I mean, I've been in the family for, uh, 17 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and the last year, uh, of, of his life, I had been living in house, taking care of him with joy. And, uh, he just, he kind of looked at me and he was like, uh, Nathan, you know, with a question mark, it's like, yep, it's me, grandpa. Yeah. He's like, and, and you're married to my granddaughter, joy, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and you're a teacher. Yep. And she's a, te- you know, trying to hold on to that reality. And yeah. because that 
our memories are so tied to reality. Yeah. And, and so understanding the importance of laying those foundations, right? This is why every step along Israel's way, God had told them, set up some kind of monument, yeah. erect some kind of monument. Absolutely. So you will remember yep. what has been done for you, right? And we create these without even thinking about it. Yeah. So the 4th of July, you know, what what is the monument that we... It's the fireworks, right? Yeah. It's that sensory experience. It's it's the cookouts. You know, we create these memories yearly to build in these monuments, as it were, yeah. to just to remember the past and, and the things that we've seen and done and been through. Yes. Um, and that's just... that's it, it, it doesn't just make us feel good. It, it connects us to our history and our past, which is yeah. so great. Yeah, it does, dude. That's a good lead into patriotism. Yeah, you know, which is t- so tied into uh, yeah history. Yes, remembering, etc. Um, so, dude, how how do we want to tackle that? We're yeah. we're, we're just freewheeling. Yeah, here. no, I mean, I think you know, I mean, first and foremost, right, uh, seventeen seventy six. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we July fourth, we declared our independence yep. from England, right? And just from that statement, we could take this podcast in a million and yeah. one directions. It was a bold move yeah. at the time. Uh, they were really risking their necks. Yep. You know, we know that. There's the famous you know, John Hancock, you know, so the king can see it without his spectacles, yep. et cetera. Um, you know, some, some really, um, you know, you're, you're signing your death warrant if you yeah. lose that war, uh, which is, uh, woo. Man, that, that kind of gives you the chills, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It's one thing to sign a petition, hey, I want schools to open after Labor right. Day. Right. Worst that's going to happen is I'll be ignored or told, uh, go away. Right. Um, but yeah. to say that I am uh, effectively leaving my country yes. and government. Yes, and I'm rejecting the king's right. claim over me. Yeah. yeah. Was, I mean, historically, it's a huge deal. Yeah, and, and we see throughout the ages that um, when when done right, that the system that was installed, and there there are people that would argue with me about this. That's okay. You're 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 free to be wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when done right, uh, it it works, uh-huh. and it it really is a unique uh, form of government that was established and set up. Yeah. After after gaining our independence. Um, I would say founded uh, on biblical principles. Uh-huh. I, I the, and again, many people would argue me about this. And again, I say you're free to be wrong. Um, <laughs> I don't believe that many of our founding fathers were were Christians. Uh-huh. I think they were deists. Uh-huh. Uh, I think there's a lot of ample evidence to support that. But even in that, and see, to me, this is the greatest argument: that as a deist, they still regarded the Bible as important enough to be the foundation for our country's law and uh, order, the, right. the truth, that that regardless of whether there was a personal relationship there, yeah. that this holds the key to, uh, uh, I'm going to use uh, classical terminology here, truth, beauty, and goodness, mm-hmm. and that our country without these things cannot exist as... As it should, sure. Um, and does that mean that everything was gotten right from the beginning? Nope. Sure. Uh, does that mean that everything was gotten right within the first hundred years? Nope. Yeah. Two hundred years? Nope. Yep. And you know we're going to be three hundred years in uh, two thousand seventy six. Right. Uh, it'll be three hundred years. Uh, no, but it was important enough to say that that the truth that's found in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Uh, is the truth that is going to govern the laws of our land. Right. Um, and, and that's worth pausing and taking note of. And, right. and it's also worth looking at and saying, if that's the case, and the Bible is the foundation, how do we respond as citizens in our, I'm, I'm going to say vocations, in our callings? Yeah. How does the soldier respond to the government? Yeah. How does the politician respond to the government? How does me, the average citizen, respond to the government as as a school teacher? Yeah. How do you, as a pastor, respond to the government? Yeah. What is our duty and role and responsibility? And I think it's important to to go beyond simply what is our what is our what do our documents say? 
what does our law say, but what does Scripture say in light of the fact that we know these things to be true? And and uh, I'm sorry, there is no one that can convince me otherwise that the Bible was the foundation for law and order in our land. There's just too much out there proving uh, the contrary, that, that it absolutely 100% was the foundation. If that's the case, then how do we respond to all of those things? Yeah, wow. In light of Romans 13, in light of um, everything. What is our what is our duty and what is our responsibility? And so, Greg, I'm going to kick it over to you. Uh, and uh, how how should you, as the pastor, mm-hmm. view our government patriotism? All of these things that we wrap up that we associate with the Fourth of July. Yeah, that you know get us going right. The Star Spangled Banner. Uh, you know, America the Beautiful. Like all of these things. How do we respond to those? And I'm asking you specifically, how do you as a pastor respond to that where your ultimate allegiance is King Jesus? Wow, great question, Nathan. Uh, And you set that up really well. I think we get a little historical framework. Uh, And I think I would agree with you. I think there were some known believers uh, that founded, but there were many, you know, most notably Jefferson. You know, I've, I've, I've had read a few things where people have tried to argue that he was a a follower of Jesus, I, I've, I'm not persuaded uh, by any means. I think it's fairly easy to show that by his own expression, he felt differently. Right. Um, but for me, uh, as a pastor, this, as you know, dude, we, I feel like we talk about this in some way or another a lot. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it has little intersection. Mm-hmm. As a person, it does. So I, I distinguish me, the person, me, yeah. the pastor. Yeah. Personally, just a couple of things here. I'm uh, I'm very moved. Um, well, just recently, uh, Ryle, one of our elders, and I had lunch at Mission Barbecue. Yep. And if you ever been there at Mission Barbecue, you know at lunch. Oh yeah. They sing the Star Spangled Banner. They ask people to to stand and remove yep. their hats. And um, that was kind of neat. Ryle had never been there at that time, so we I told him I said, "Oh, Ryle, we're we're going to stand." And um, yeah, it was kind of neat to look at this restaurant. And everybody's looking at the flag in the middle, and they're. They're either listening or some people are singing along. And I noticed at the end, dude, there was a, a, a very elderly gentleman who was wearing his uh, veteran's ball cap. Yeah. And he was saluting um, very in a very focused way. And uh, he and I, Raul and I both noticed, I kind of said, you know, look at the, look at that gentleman over there. When he sat down, I said he was wiping tears from his eyes. Yeah. So when I left, um, he was still in the corner, and I saw it was it was Korea. Okay. Yeah. So dude, I mean that is going back a ways. Yeah. This man may it probably his late eighties. Yeah. If not early nineties, uh, I would think. And I um, so I thanked him for his service. I whenever I see somebody that's a veteran, yep. I I try. I saw my dad do that. Yeah. So uh, I have very strong personal views, dude. I, we talked about this before. I'm been so influenced by my family yeah. that when I'm at an Orioles game or something, and I, I want to say this because I bet a lot of our listeners do do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't have a problem. I really don't. It's a personal preference. Sure. I don't say, oh, yeah. in the Star Spangled Banner. I have a problem with it, but that's just because I'm from New Hampshire and <laughs> yeah, not Baltimore. <laughs> exactly, dude. I was going to say, you have a problem with it for multiple reasons. <laughs> like, what they get these trash Baltimore fans out of, out of, out of my headspace? I don't do it. Yeah. Uh, for for me to do it, it would feel kind of cheapening. Yeah. And I'm saying me. Yes. I'm not saying somebody else does. I yep. I think there's a way that can work. Yeah. So I've got all this stuff going on the personal front, right? That I I've I've got feelings. I've got you know what we've talked before my own political views, mm-hmm. my own sense of appreciation for uh, our freedoms on the pastoral front, and I unashamedly say this at some at sometimes with risk of controversy. There's a strong firewall there. Yeah. My mission was defined, and I think every Christian's mission, uh, not just pastors, yeah. by Jesus. Yeah. 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Right? 1,700 years prior to America right. being a blip on the screen. So it's ancient. Yep. It's eternal. It's citizenship in another kingdom. Yep. Uh, I've been very influenced theologically by Augustine's works, yeah. you know, his two cities City theology. God, yeah. Uh, there's a city of God, there's a city of men. Yep. Our citizenship is the city of God. Yep. The city of men, in my time and your time, dude, it's manifest in this 
twenty first early twenty first century. Yeah, we live in the United States. Um, but dude, as a Christian, I'm thinking if I'm in New Zealand, yeah, or I'm in Ghana, yeah, or I'm in um, Russia, yeah, or Ukraine, China, the Middle China, East, anywhere, yeah. it's the same. Yeah, Jesus is there. So I'll say this, dude. Um, that's why at CFC we've never done like a patriotic service. Sure. Oh, I might be stepping on some toes when I say that. Yeah. Um, again, I, I don't really need to. We we that's not a decision we've made. Yeah. Because um, I tend to think that we're trying to show our solidarity with Christians around the world. Yes. And in all those other places, if I went there to a church in Ghana, I hope I'd be hearing the gospel. Yeah, not their unique country's history, right. and a celebration of their unique country's history. Now, if I'm there in Ghana as a visitor, yeah, and I'm learning about the culture, I'm learning in another context. That's great. I don't want that in the church. Yeah, that's not the mission of the church. Yeah, the mission of the church is Jesus. Yeah, and the gospel and discipling. Yeah, uh, people. So I try to keep a very firm firewall there. Yeah. No, and, and I think I, I think that's good. I think that's fair. Uh, I, the other thing I'll say about the Star Spangled Banner thing to go back, I'm, I'm going to be a little harder on people than you. <laughs> if I'm at the O's game, yeah, I can I can tolerate it. Like yeah. I can see it. I can be like, okay, it's you know, not something I'm going to do. Yeah, but it is. They're the O's, and yep, uh, okay, whatever. Nathan, you're when not you're, saying right. Dare to O's. Yeah. The okay. O's. The O's, dear hon. Um, but when you're doing it anywhere else, every time the Star Spangled Banner comes on, oh, yeah. that bothers me. I know what you mean. Um, that, like some kid's uh, Little League game? Yeah. I'm going to be like, uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. now now you're you're bridging into the realm of can we stop being ridiculous? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, so, so I will say that, that, okay, at the O's game, as much as, again, growing up in New Hampshire, coming down to Baltimore, I'm yeah. like, eh, this is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can I take it at the O's game. Yeah. But uh they do that when you go to Benji's local drive-in theater here right. actually uh the only drive-in theater in uh Maryland yeah. that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um one of the only ones left in the United States. Yeah, it's um, a cool it's a cool spot. It is. It really is. They they play the Star Spangled Banner before they Oh, they do. That's they, right. Uh, show Dude, the I forgot about that. Yeah. And when you start going, "Oh, <sighs> This isn't the O's game. I know what you mean. And so no, I'm, I'm going to be a little harder and be like, okay, can we? You're can we swaying re- me, dude. Can we it, like keep it to the the, yeah. the Ripken Stadium there? Right. Like, can we not bring it outside of that environment? Yeah. Like, I, it, okay, it's it's cute, it's funny, like it's it's kind of a camaraderie. Like, let's right. get everybody together and going. But like outside of that. Um, the O's aren't playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be interesting, dude. I'm picturing an SNL type skit where you bring Francis Scott Key, yeah. uh, like in, 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 into like a Baltimore crowd, <laughs> and he's saying, "Would you shut up? Uh, what what did you o. do to my composition? <laughs> it's O, first of all, not A." <laughs> dude, that is uh, funny. Anyway, um, okay, so I'll, I'll get no, off no, my little, uh, little, pet peeve, dude. Yeah. That's what makes it uh, makes it makes it real. Just a little bit of a rant there um, yeah but yeah i i think it's it's true right that there are different facets of who i am that should come through at different times right. and that doesn't mean that you know i'm i'm this fake person who's not real it just means there's a context and an appropriate way to express myself in a in that context so right. for instance um teach uh taught government and economics uh three years or two years when I was at uh, Redeemer, my roles changed. I'm doing a completely different role, doing very little teaching now. In those years that I taught government and economics, I would not lean into my preferences yeah. because I'm not there to stand up and share my political preferences. It's not your role in that place. I'm there yeah. to teach them. Right. Here are... Uh, here are the political structures. Here are the economic structures. Yep. This is how each one impacts the other. Yes. So when you start crossing over, um, you know, communism economics uh, with uh, with a democracy, this is what you're going to get when yes. you take communism and you put in capitalism. This mm-hmm. is what you and just showing them from history and experience 
what the landscape looks like. It's not my job to critique those things. Right. Um, with the exception of communism. I do believe communism uh, does not work, has not worked, will not work. Right. I think history proves that. And <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, but even in that, not railing on it as much as I could, but sure. just uh, simply stating, again, historically what's happened and then sharing. I, I've spent time in Cuba sharing my view of the landscape being in Cuba and, yeah. and what that looked like. Um, but it's not my role in that to say, um, yeah, I think uh, I think American democracy is the best government in the land and right. and start teaching on American democracy. Yeah. I give my hand away as a teacher if I do that. I agree. And, uh, dude, having, well, I should be careful, having taught in some contexts mm -hmm. in Christian schools where I've seen teachers do that has not been good. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it's 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 a classic, dude. What's the answer? To it? Stay in your lane. Right. There's a lane. This is my role in this format. This yes. is what I'm going to do. Well, dude, uh, teaching public speaking, uh, the majority of the students' persuasive theses I don't agree with. Sure. Uh, the majority of them, I see a a, a shift. Yeah. In the generation, we've talked about that many times before. But my role is not to to argue them into a in, in it, right as an individual right as a person outside of the classroom. If there's respect there, and they have had some students come back that want to talk about things, totally different ball game. Yes, then they're talking to you, the person, you, the instructor. There to I, is their thesis. Uh, does it is the main idea spelled out? Do they have the three points that they're going to be making embedded in their yes. thesis? Because that's it's kind of the the approach we use. Um, uh, have they argued based upon facts? Have yes. they? Have they? Uh, you know, those are what you grade. So, yep. if, if you start stepping out of that, you're, you're in, in in a very different role. Yes. So I think often, dude, on these things, we're just hybrid people. But I do think we should be very as a as a pastor. Um, this is what I'm going to focus on. As an individual talking to a friend or a yes. neighbor, well, I might talk about this. Yes, you know, it, it's it's just being uh, being adaptable. Yeah, but yeah, I think the the church um, in, in the church world, um, yeah, we acknowledge the fourth. Yeah, and we we I, I do think it's appropriate in our country. We acknowledge things that shape people. Sure, right? They don't become the main thing. Jesus right. is always the main thing. Right. So on Memorial Day, we recognize in our congregation we have a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, who have had family members serve and in some cases die. Veterans Day, we have a lot of people yep. that have served. Yep. Uh, that's unique to our country. I understand that. Uh, so we acknowledge those things. Yes. Much like if there was a significant local event. Yeah. I'm sure churches in Nashville a few months ago yeah. were very focused on that tragic school shooting in, yes. in the school. So we're not talking about blindness. Yes. But we're just really talking about main thing. Yeah. The old thing. The main thing is to keep the main thing right. the main thing. Well, and and let's be real. Like as as a teacher, I work at Redeemer Classical Christian School. Greg, you're a pastor working at Christ Fellowship Church, Falston, Maryland, Kingsville, Maryland. For me, I am very passionate about my job. Yeah, I will go out of my way to convince people why they should send their children to Redeemer. Yeah. yeah. Um, I believe in the school. I believe in the mission of the school. I believe in classical approach, classical mm -hmm. education. And so I will go out of my way to passionately tell people why I think they should go there. Yeah. I'm not yeah. a soldier. Right. I have not fought and bled for this country. Mm -hmm. I have not served overseas in defense of this country. So when I hear the Star Spangled Banner, the tears are not going to come to my eyes. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the freedom that I have. I've yeah. been all over the world. Yeah. Um, like I said, I spent time in uh, Cuba uh, under communism. Yeah. Uh, I've been to many countries over uh, overseas in Europe under uh, socialism. Yeah. Um, I appreciate what we have here in the United States. I'm very thankful for it. But when I sing the Star Spangled Banner, I don't have images of war running through my head. Yeah. I don't have images of friends around me dying. Of I don't have images <clears throat> of 
coming back with friends yeah. and growing old with them and them dying. Yeah. My view and my passion for America is tempered by other things. Yeah. A soldier, I hope, would have the same passion for America and for the country that I have for Redeemer. Uh-huh. That you would have, I hope, for CFC, right? right? When you're out talking with people, you are passionately going to be talking that come join or come check out our church, right? Yeah. Even if somebody's like, Yeah, I did the church thing and you know, it's it's just not for me, yeah. you are still passionately going to be telling them, why don't you come and check out ours? Mm-hmm. Right, you're going to be doing that with as much um, emphasis and passion as you can. Just like I want the American soldier who is who is fighting for my freedom to have that kind of zeal and passion for the country and the people that they're fighting for. Yeah. But when it comes to that that soldier being a believer, yeah, I also hope that they have the distinction to understand that not that while that enemy combatant is is over there and I might have to take that person's life in a battle yeah that that is still an image bearer of God oh yeah you know and and that's the hope is that again can we distinguish our personal from our professional from our belief enough to say that while I'm a whole person and while I'm one person there are categories in which I view things and I would say, mm-hmm. again, just like, you know, um, uh, school right down, two schools right down the street from Redeemer, Perry Hall Christian, and uh, Open Bible. I've worked at both of them. I'm not knocking them. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be telling other people, why don't you go to that school? <laughs> sure. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, and so, again, you know, I would hope that the soldiers who are hearing the, the Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem of this country, that there would be a different level of involvement and emotion. But to say that I have to have that same level of emotion yep. and involvement and investment into that, yeah. I don't think it's fair. Right. And I yeah. don't think it's right. Or you might feel that any, um, then you might even question your emotion because it didn't tie to your experience. Are you just kind of forcing yourself because yeah. I'm supposed to feel this way? I've heard kids talk about this, interesting enough, Nathan. I mean, I know we're wrapping up, but I'll throw this out really quick. Yeah. This could be a real curveball. I've had kids uh, tell me, or w- adults when they were kids, the pressure they felt like a grandparent had died and everybody's crying. Yes. They should cry. But they didn't have the connection. Yes. So they're kind of maybe learning, confused, and said, that, that's okay. Yeah. You know, that's okay. You're, there's a degree you respect other people's connection. Yes. But, yeah, if it spills over. So, actually, dude, I've had this. Sometimes you have people that are very passionate, and they may have had an impeccable military service record in their family's history. Mm -hmm. So they may want things to spill over into the church. Mm -hmm. Now, again, my two answers to that. Number one would be Jesus defined our mission. Yes. And it is is international. It is... It's not international. It's cosmic. Yes. It's it's a new heaven and a new earth. It's the city of God. Um, That would be my first way. The second one, I might go a little more personal to to recognize people that have passion about things that tie into their personal experience should be respected. Yes. Oh, I totally get it. But again, it's like the old legalism thing, right? right? Legalism is when you make your elective yes. my requirement. Yes. I'm like, nobody's knocking your elective. Yeah. Dude, it's like people that get all into, I don't care about antique cars, but I know some guys, they can tell you everything about, oh my goodness, this Mustang, this yep. 57 Chevy, and I went to this show and that show. and all. That's awesome. Yeah. Please don't make me do that. Well, and, and let me just uh, clarify before people are like, oh, he's unpatriotic and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, my father fought in Vietnam. Uh-huh. Um, Purple Heart. He was yeah. injured in the war and wow. received the Vietnam Cross of Gallantry, which is the equivalent to our Medal of Honor I here in America. I that, dude. Wow. The reason why he received the Vietnam Cross of Gallantry is because obviously we were we were working with South Vietnam yeah. to repel North Vietnam. Right. And he was in charge of a Vietnam platoon. Wow. And so he saved Vietnamese lives and received their highest uh, distinction Again, the equivalent of our Medal of Honor. That's incredible, dude. Um, I see, and, and your your mother has this. I'm assuming. Oh yeah, that's yep, incredible. Yeah, we have his medals at the house, yeah. and um, you know they're all there on display. No. And yeah, he was yeah. um, he was he was shot and injured five shot five times, 
um, over there uh, and survived. And nobody, dude, should uh, question your patriotism. W- w- uh, patriotism when you express what you've expressed, it, it's, it makes sense. It's um, to me, uh, it's it's about respect. Yeah, it's about recognizing people's background, and you really, again, you just can't force a person right. to feel or prioritize something the same way you right. might. Um, again, Jesus has defined the main things. Right. We know what those are, and then we, each of us, look. So, dude, the experience of the Canadian Christian, the Brazilian Christian, the, right. the, the you know, um, uh, Costa Rican Christian, right. I mean, they're all going to be a little bit yeah. different. They're going to be shaped yeah. by their own context, their own history, right. their own culture. But you, you, we can find our unity, yes, ultimate unity. And I think thing. that's the thing. You know, when Christ is preeminent and the Word of God is preeminent, then our passions individually will look different. Yeah, and that's that's okay. Of that's course. good because the thing that is going to make the soldier a good soldier, able to be out on the battlefield doing the things that they need to do, is different than what makes you a good pastor. Than what makes me a good teacher, able yeah. to do the things that we're going to do. Exactly. Um, and and so yeah, you know, we don't have to show the same zeal for the government. We don't have to show the same zeal for the things that we look at and say are, are patriotic. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean we don't appreciate them. It doesn't mean that we, we aren't thankful yep. for those who have come before us, yep. uh, who have been injured in the course of battle or even have paid the ultimate price in battle for yep. those things. Um, but like you say, like, you know, with the grandfather, right? I I respect the fact that these people were important and fundamental oh. for why I'm here today. Of course, of course. Um, That's obviously, just my, learning your uh, own history, right? Obviously, my great grandfather dying uh, it would have had an impact had he died earlier in history than he did right. um, on my life. But I never knew my great grandfather. Sure. Yeah. And so my level of love and appreciation is going to be far different than my mother, who knew. Oh, her of grandfather. Of course. Um, so, well, my friend, we are uh, out Dude, of time. It was, yeah, yeah, but it was, it was good. Yeah, I'm glad I, we had the opportunity enjoyed, to do this. And I hope you have an awesome fourth. You as well. I hope that everybody listening has a great fourth, or they had a great fourth if you're listening to this a few days later. Yes. It was fun. And uh, until the next time, we just rock the Casbah. Thank you again for listening to These Go to 11, an unchurchy conversation about everyday faith. Once again, please make sure you like, subscribe, and review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you ever find yourself in the Forest Hill, Maryland area, please feel free to stop by at 135 Industry Lane, and you can get all of our service times and information at ChristFC.org. These go to 11.